and welcome back. And in the previous video, we've completed the geometry creation for the EM break example. And in this video, we're going to continue with the next steps in the simulation process. And we're going to create a setup, the excitation, the boundary conditions, the analysis with the parametric analysis, and then view the various results as we vary the air gap and see what its effects are. So go ahead, launch the ANSYS electronic desktop, again, AEDT for short, student version. Open the EMB file that we saved from the EMB example part two. And notice in this model that the core and the coil are touching each other. So we need to add some space between them. And now we can do this by assigning an insulating boundary condition around the coil. Go ahead and expand the model tree and select the folder named solids and select the coil. Right mouse click on it, assign boundary, insulating. Now the insulating boundary in the magnetostatic 3D solver is the only assigned internal boundary condition. And this boundary only affects the 3D conduction paths. And it acts as an insulating surface to prevent the current flowing from one conductor to another. The default boundary condition in Maxwell is tangential fields. And so what that means is that the region must be large enough to allow for fringing fields. Now, we don't need any additional boundary conditions for this model. So next we need to assign the excitation to the coil. The current excitation defines the total current that goes through the selected cross section in ampere terms. In this model, we have a closed coil. So we need to create a section in the coil so that we can insert an excitation. Select the coil, right mouse click, edit surface section. And in that pop-up window, select the XZ plane and click OK. Go ahead, select the created selection under Sheets. Right mouse click, Edit, Boolean, Separate Bodies. And notice now that we have two sections under the Sheets, and we only need one. Select one of the sections and press Delete. Go ahead and select the remaining section. Right mouse click, Assign Excitation, Current, and leave the name as Current 1. Under the properties value, write amp asterisk turns, two variables here. Now this is going to allow us to parameterize the number of turns and the current that's flowing through each of these turns. Go ahead, select the type of stranded, and you could also swap the direction of the current using the swap direction radio button. And you can keep the any direction here and go ahead, click OK. On the pop-up window for AMP, the variable, keep the unit type as current, change the unit to AMPs, and the value to 1, click OK. And in another pop-up window opens for turns, and change the unit type to none, and the value to 200, click OK. You can always click the design name in that project manager window, and you will view the defined variables in the properties panel. Now, when you're in that properties panel, you can also double click on any of the parameter values to edit these variables. So we need to assign the force parameter to the brake plate to calculate the force that's exerted by the electromagnetic core on it. Go ahead and select the brake plate, right mouse click, assign parameter, force. And in that pop-up window, keep the name as force one, Go ahead, select the type as virtual. And the Lorentz force is a J cross B type of force calculation. And that only works for selections of non-magnetic material objects, which are carrying currents. Now the virtual force calculation uses a virtual work approach on these surfaces on the selected objects. So therefore it works best when there's some sort of air gap surrounding the selected objects or the assembly. Click OK. Under the Draw tab, click on the Create Region icon. In that pop-up window, choose Pad All Directions Similarly. Enter 100 for the value column. Click OK. Right-click on the Analysis Setup 
select add solution setup and in that solve setup pop-up window go ahead and keep the defaults and click ok so now let's add a parametric setup go ahead right mouse clip on the optometrics folder add parametric in the pop-up window select add another pop-up window comes up choose the variable gap set linear step and let's be a little realistic here and set up something that's practically possible. Set up the sweep with a start value of 0.2 millimeters, stop at one millimeter, make the step size 0.1 millimeter, click add, click OK. Now select the table tab next to the sweep definition so that you could view the various gap variables. Go to options tab and select save fields and mesh and this will save the fields for each iteration. Click OK. Go ahead, right mouse click on the mesh and select initial mesh settings. In that pop-up window, curved surface meshing, move to the cursor towards the left, say approximately three. And we're doing this just to make sure that the number of mesh elements that are created is within the limit for the student version. If you have the full version, Go ahead, keep the default, and you can even make the uh, initial mesh setting finer. In the simulation tab, click on validate, the big green check mark to validate the design that you have the necessary steps completed. And be sure there's no errors to be addressed. So this completes the model setup. So let's go and analyze the parametric design. Go ahead, expand optometrics under the design right mouse click on the parametric set, choose analyze. And when the analysis is done, right mouse click on the results, create the magnetostatic report rectangular plot, keep the solution as setup one, last adaptive, go ahead, change the parameter to force one, choose the quantity as force underscore mag and click on new report. Now this plot is a force versus gap representation. So you can clearly see from this plot that there's drop in the force acting on the brake plate with the increase in the air gap. So this sounds reasonable. As the air gap increases, the reluctance to be in magnetic field increases and hence the reduction in force. And on the same vein, you can also perform a parametric analysis with turns and amp variables and then view the variation of the force versus term amps and gap. To view the field plot, double click on that design name to go back to the 3D modeler window. Go ahead and expand the planes under the history tree. Select global XZ plane, right mouse click on the field overlays, select the fields B, mag B, and when the pop-up window comes up, select mag B under quantity and click done. And now you can see that the magnetic flux density plot on the planar cross section of the EMB plate. You can also animate these fields, makes for nice visualization. Right mouse click on the mag B1 in the field overlays and select animate. In the pop-up window under swept variables, select the parametric setup from the drop down menu and parametric setup one. And now you'll see all the variations of the parametric setup one, which is gap, click OK. Now you can see the variation of the flux density in the core and the brake plate with the change in that air gap variable between them. You can control the speed of the animation as well. You can export the animation as a video file. So thank you for watching this video. And in the next video, we'll see how we can create a 2D version in a few steps using this 3D model and then compare the results between them, between Maxwell 2D and the Maxwell 3D simulation. What's the difference? Go ahead, visit courses.ansys.com and watch our other video modules on all of the ANSYS simulation tools as well as any related topics.